Are you after a sturdy wallet that can take a hyper beam, look cute like a Gardevoir, and be slim like a Sudawudu? Well, I got you covered. Introducing the Ridge Wallet, a slim, sexy way to carry around your cards and cash. I've used the Ridge Wallet for over 69 years now. The Ridge Wallet comes in a variety of styles to suit your everyday needs. These are some of the wallet styles I like the best, like the carbon fiber, the titanium, the gold. Really nice, cool designs to make you stand out. They also have some neat products to complement your wallet, like a bottle opener, pens, backpacks, charging, knives, you name it. You can get 10% off your purchase today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash pipnight. Yes, that's right, ridge.com slash pipnight. And use code pipnight Link in the description of the video. Cheers, Ridge, for the channel sponsor. What up, it's you, Fate Fear, Women Fool, Shiny Silver Pokemon Team. Real quick, people, I'm doing a Platinum Nuzlocke on my Twitch stream. I'll be doing that around this time or probably very, very close this time. So make sure you check it out. I'm going to be doing a marathon there for my birthday. Let's get into today's video. we got two battles here today. I've got a single battle and I'm going to be bringing you a multi-battle as well. Now, this is six Pokemon that are shiny silver or you could say gray as well they're both very very similar this is a battle against hunt down and this is a very like this is a very very ishing battle which sums up my luck amazingly that's all i'm gonna say so we got a, uh, a nidorino lead here now nidorino can have the ability hustle so i thought this could be a good opportunity to try and set up my nine tiles i got a power swap swagger flare blitz and dig set i've got max speed and a max sack jolly nature so what we're going to do is go for the swagger and what i'm going to do after that is hopefully i can dodge an attack or the Nidorino will hit itself, and then I can go for a power swap, right? So that plus two an attack will be transferred onto my nine tiles. Now the Nidorino hits itself in confusion, does so, so much damage, and unfortunately it's gonna be swapping out. That's gonna really be unfortunate because I could have got an easy plus two right there. Next Pokemon to come in is gonna be the Matrix. I went for power swap, and that's gonna be pretty much a useless turn. So I thought, all right. Let's start this ball rolling again. At very worst case scenario, I can get some damage on the Matrix as well. I mean, they can keep swapping out if they like. I'll, I'll keep getting swagger damage, hopefully, right? That, that, that's the worst case scenario. So Matrix is going to be uh, confused there, and it's going to be hitting itself in confusion as well. This is a very, very nice start. Now I'm going to go for the power swap. The Matrix is staying in there. The only really bad thing, if Matrix does get around the confusion, I'm probably going to get dropped in one shot easy, right? Matro hits itself again. I've got three in a row. Now I'm gonna go for the flare blitz here on the Matro. Matro is gonna get buried there. That's very, very, that's a quality, that's an amazingly lucky start there. Now you're probably wondering what the item is on my nine tiles. I gave it Citrus Bro, so I could use Flare Blitz a little bit more often. If your health did get a little bit uh, low or the sun went away, you could go for the Desperation Dynamax button. Now, then comes the uh, Shell Gone here. This is where the battle started to get. Uh, Rather interesting. So I can't really do a lot to shell guns. It's like, okay, I'm going to go swagger on this like two or three times. And hopefully it hits itself for confusion. And then I might go for a Dynamax, right? Unfortunately, shell guns are going to get through that. Hits me with a Dragon Claw, but I lived on five health. Whew, that was really, really close right there. So getting some of my health back there from the Citrus Pro. This is my last chance to take out the shell gun. I thought, you know what? We may as well go for complete risk here because... I don't. I can't take out with Flebits, and I can't take it out with Dig, right? So hopefully it'll uh, take itself out. It snaps out of confusion, and now it's got plus four in attack, and it's also bulky as well. I know this is going to be an Everlight set, right? Okay, next Pokemon we're going to use the Corviknight. This is a Rest Sleep Talk Corviknight with Steel Beam and Snore. I've got the item as Throat Spray. So what you do, right, uh, you can fire off a Steel Beam, then you can go to sleep again, get that Snore up, get that plus one in Special Attack, and maybe fire off another Steel Beam. Uh, the special, uh, the EVs are Max Special Attack and Max Health, Modest Nature. Steel Beam is going to rinse half my health. Shellgun's going for the Fire Fang, and Corviknight is going to go down. This is bad. Uh, I don't believe that crit really mattered there. Unless that shell gone was like completely just fully bulk. I mean, you know, Corviknight's fairly bulky with Max Health. Anyway, I was going to lose that matchup regardless. We're going to go into Arctivish here. This is a quite interesting set. I've got Super Fang, Brine, Freeze Dry, and Ancient Power. Now, I'm not wanting to play any games. I was like, I've got to get rid of this show. Like, when I seen this team, right, I thought it was free real estate for, like, a, a physical nine tiles week. But suddenly, it got turned around. Now, the item on this one is Quick Law 2, so I could potentially get a Super Fang off, right? 
and then I can get a quick floor and Brian obviously will hit them for the double base power and it's very, it hits very, very hard right in that dart. Uh, it's like a 120 base power. It's very, very powerful. So go for the Dynamax Arctivish here. I'm going to be going for the Max Hailstorm. This is also going to help my ability too. So I'll be very, very speedy. So I've got, I'm very, very speedy. Plus I've got a quick loss. There's not too many Pokemon that are going to be out at speed. Definitely not a Shellgon, right? We all know how fast Shellgon is. It's not a bad, uh, not a bad shine. It's actually a minty green shiny is Shellgon. Next Pokemon to come in is going to be the Electabuzz. So I was thinking, okay, well... I could go for a Max Salasaurum, or I could go for a, a Max Geyser. Let's go for Max Geyser. What the heck? Let's do that. Uh, so I get a quick little activation. Not that it really mattered against Electivire. And uh, this hits really, really hard, but it doesn't take it out. It still managed to live here. So I know there's going to be some sort of electric type move coming my way. I've got on this one, Max Health and Max Special Attack. Now, it's not going to be an attack. It's going to be a status. It's going to be Thunder Wave. And uh, now we've got... Di it's got Discharge and Thunder Wave. What the heck? So, obviously, my opponent really wanted me to be paralyzed. Unfortunately, I get paralyzed on my last turn of Dynamax. And Arctivish is going to get hit very hard by Discharge. Now, so I'm going to get outsped here. Uh, Electivite hits me really hard and takes me out there, which sucks. So, bye-bye, Arctivish. A little bit of... The bad luck start to seep in now. Next Pokemon we got here is Meetang. And this is a cool shiny Pokemon, shiny silver Pokemon. Now, we got on this set a Scary Face Flinching set. I gave this one uh, Max Speed and Max Tape. We got Scary Face, Iron Head, Rock Slide, and Zen Hound Butt. Uh, pretty good, uh, quite a, a couple of standard moves there, but with the Scary Face, it enables me to have a chance to outspeed other Pokemon. Now, the item on this one is Everlight, too. So, go for the Scary Face here. Unfortunately, it's not really going to work out like I hope because the Electabuzz went for Thunder Wave. I thought it might go for a Discharge again. Let's be real, I probably would have got paralyzed anyway. Let, let's be real about that. So here comes the Discharge. It's about a four hit KO. Getting that Zen head butt off was really, really good there because I can finally get rid of the Thunder Waving Discharging Electabuzz. Now, we got this Hustle Knit Arena left, which could have a move to hit with. I'm not really sure. It might have a ground type move. And I'm thinking, if I can land one Zen head butt off against it, it's going to go down right. Here comes the Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw crits me. He does a heap of damage. Now, that's going to be powered up by Hustle as well. Zen head butt misses. Like, I'm not the one who's meant to have Hustle, right? It's meant to be the Nidorino. Anyway, I'm going to hit by another Shadow Claw there. Wait, that, that, that critted me as well. So two crits in a row for the Nidorino. That's not very nice. We all know that crit matter, by the way. So my uh, meat tank's gone. Next Pokemon is my Mimiku. This is, oh, this is probably more of a, a, a gray than a silver, but it was hard sort of to say, like, if they were gray and silver. Maybe we'll just count silver and gray, right? Uh, so we're going to go for a attract curse set with infestation. It's pretty fun. I've got the item as leftovers here, and i got max health, and I've also got max speed. So while uh, the Nidorino doesn't get infatuated, now it's going to land a poison jab. Can this thing just miss, like, one attack? That'd be really great. Like, it's meant to have hustle, not no gun. So anyway, my disguise is going to be busted, which is very, very unfortunate. And I'm going to take a little bit of damage there, right? Uh, leftovers is almost going to heal me back to probably full health like the next set. So hopefully I can get a miss here, right? So we're going to go for Cursor. Cursor is going to cut down half my health and obviously put a curse on the opponent there, right? Uh, so this is a pretty interesting set because you can use Curse a couple of times if you get some, uh, if you get lucky with the attract, right? Now we're going to get a nice little turn of infatuation there. Finally, Nidorino doesn't do something. That's like the first turn, and we're going to need like probably two more turns to take it out here. Unless I can get this infestation damage and the curse, and that should be enough to take out Nidorino. But Nidorino has to not do anything this turn. Now, Nidorino does not fall in love with my Mimiku, and it's going to have Smart Strike. Oh, so that can't miss. Fair enough. So Mimiku is going to go down uh, to that. That's very, very unfortunate. Bye-bye, Mimiku. This Nidorino is destroying me. So uh, we got the curse doing some more damage there, thank goodness. And Nidorino has only got a little bit of health here. I've got one more Pokemon. Like I can't believe, seriously, just, just be honest with you, right? When you watched the first quarter of that battle, when the um, the Nine Tails of that, you did not think that I was gonna like even get close to like having my Nine Tails losing, right? But it did. So I'm gonna throw the substitute up there, and the Nidorino is going to hit again with the Poison Jab. It won't miss. It simply won't miss. That was also a crit, though. What the? What's going on today? So my sub is going to fade there, and the Nidorino is going to fade, which is very, very good. This is a Horn Drill Substitute um, set with my Rapidash. It's kind of similar to my um, my Ponytail set, right? 
And I've also got on there, I've got sub to get around some other moves too. So the next Pokemon to come in is the Fletcher. I'm going to go for Hypnosis, and of course, it's going to miss, right? Never saw that one coming. Now, Fletcher is going to go for a Sword Dance here. This is very bad. That will do a lot of damage to me if it's got a flying move, yeah? So we've got a Dynamax Fletchinder. I do not want to get hit by a flying move. If I get hit by a flying move, that is ball game right there. So I've got to make sure I put this asleep. Then I was thinking, if I can get the Hypnosis off, right, I could then essentially go for the sub, and then I could go for Morning Scum, right? That's the other move that's got on there. So uh, there we go. We've got Fletchinder. It just looks like the normal size of a... I don't know, like a normal Dynamax or normal Pokemon size right there. Hypnosis is going to land and it's going to close its little peepers, which is very, very good. This is going to give me the prime opportunity uh, to go for the substitute. So hopefully I can take the last two Pokemon out with Horn Drill. That's the idea anyway. So get that sub up. It woke up right after that turn and now it's going to hit me with a Max Airstream. You wouldn't read about it. So I'll uh, book... Bye-bye to my substitute. Bye-bye. Goodbye and bye-bye together, by the way. And now, uh, well, we got a plus one in speed on the Fletchinder. Now I can go for a Max Airstream, and now my uh, Rapid Ash is going to get one shot. Man, that was so that was such a lucky, unlucky battle. I just wanted to show you that battle. Just the way the luck could change in a battle. Like, amazing luck at the start. Then there's, like, terrible luck there at the end. Crazy battle there. Thank you, Hunt Down, for trolling me. Let's get on to the second battle. This is a, uh, a multi-battle. And uh, we've got a 2v2 here. So out of my team, I'll be using three of the shiny silver team. And also my opponents are also running some uh, shiny teams as well of their own choice. So different shiny colors on their team. So my, uh, my partner here has got the uh, a black shiny team by the looks of it. And we've got the cleft here is, I guess, like a gold or yellow shiny. And maybe, I'm not sure what the unfez is. Maybe that's, it's either pink or Pokemon that don't really change too much in shinies. Anyway, we got a sky attack unfez here, which is going to be very uh, unpleasant. And it's going to be hitting me with, uh, I think it's going to be hitting me with a power herb sky attack. Now, this does have a chance to crit too. And if it has super luck, it's going to do like an enormous amount of damage there. So... It didn't crit me, thank goodness. Now Haxorus is going to be going for a tract on the Unfezzant. Look at those big, look at those big flapping wings. Like, how can you not be attracted to that, right? So here comes a Super Fang from my Arctazog. It's going to be doing uh, half the health of the little Boo Boo Keys there. So I'm going to get the Dynamax in. Now, of course, in this battle, we're allowed to Dynamax too. If you've never watched a multi-battle before, Dynamax pretty much goes back and forth between yourself and the partner. However, only one of you can Dynamax, so... Like a, I guess you could say like a raid. We've got a guillotine Haxorus here. We're back in the one hit KO moves again. And down goes that little turkey there. So it's very good. Imagine getting infatuated and hit by guillotine. That's just me. So go for the brine. It doesn't quite take it out. It was very, very close there. Next Pokemon to come in here is going to be the Alola Nine Tower. So I'm thinking right here with all these uh, screens and stuff up, I could easily get some uh, Super Fangs going, right? So uh, we're going to get outsped here by the uh, Prankster... Um, Klefki there setting some spikes up on the ground. Go for the Brian and Klefki is going to be going down. So that's very, very good. The uh, Brian Arctivish is working very, very nicely. I think I might have called that Arctazolt earlier on. I think I, I'm getting my fossils mixed up. Now we got the Haxoroscope for Taunt on the Nine Tail, so it can't set up any, I don't know, scummy veils or anything like that. Next Pokemon we got here is the Rapid Ash. Now, Rapidash, I, I'm, I'm trying to think out what my uh, opponent's theme. If you can figure out what the opponent's themes are, let me know. So I think the Ninetales uh, team was a pink Shining Spoke one. So we had the Unpheasant and the Ninetales. And then we had like the, uh, we had like a, maybe a yellow Shiny. So we had Klefki and the uh, Rapidash. That's what I'm thinking so far, right? Anyway, we're going to go for a Sufang on the Night Tiles doing half health, which is very, very good. So my uh, my partner clearly has black shinies. So we had the uh, Haxorus and the Rayquaza. Both of them are really, really great shinies. Look amazing, right? I think Rayquaza, I believe Rayquaza is probably the best black looking shiny in the game, right? That, you've got the black and you've got the nice yellow rings on there. And then you've got like the nice red sort of outlines on its tail and it's like, mouth it just looks it just looks really really good you know anyway so we're gonna have a hyper beam run look at this hyper beam rayquaza i'm not sure what evs they're running on this but i have to say it probably would have been max special attack run now are uh, the uh, ponies that rapid no, the rapid actually going to live that way hits me the psychic cut does not take me out here comes another brian on the nine tiles it's not going to do much damage because nine tiles of course is not half health or below 
I need to land an attack on that Rapidash with my Brian Arkovich. That that should almost take it out. Now we got a draining kiss coming from the Night Tiles. Unfortunately, this uh this Night Tiles is gonna keep getting its health back, so my Super Fang and Brian strategy is not gonna be working on it as well. Like I'm probably near gonna need to go for something more. I don't know, powerful, like a, a Hydro Miss, something like that. Now, Arctivish is going to go down to Rapidash's Psycho Cut, so bye-bye, Arctivish. Arctivish almost could have fitted in the, my uh, my partner's team as well. It's almost black. It's more like it's more grey than black, though. Okay, my next Pokemon I'm going to swap in here is the Mimiku. Since it got destroyed the uh, first battle there, I thought I'd bring it back into the multi and see what it could possibly do. Taking a little bit of spikes damage there, and now we got Hail from the Nine Towers. So that's bad. That's going to hit all the Pokemon on the field. Plus, it might be able to set up a Aurora Val, which I don't really want to happen. So, I'm going to be going for a Curse here. Now, when you use Curse in a battle, like a double battle like this, right, you cannot pick your target. So, it will just target the Mimiku. So, that means, right, say if one of the other Pokemon you put a Curse on, right, you can't, like, zone in and do the next one. Like, you've just got to use Curse on yourself, and it's either going to fail or it's going to work. So, it's, it's pretty risky, right? So, uh, here comes another hype beam there from Ray Rayquaza, so yours truly. And uh, Play Rough is going to be ending my disguise. I really, really wanted to get one more Curse off against the opponent. So, that way I could put a Curse on one Pokemon and then the next one. That'd be quite cool, right? I don't think I'll be able to set up any of my other moves, like Infestation and Track, right? I'm just going... I simply just won't have enough time, plus I've lost my disguise, so that's pretty much what it was for. Next Pokemon to come in here is going to be very, very scary too, by the way. So Rapidash is going to get hit there by the Curse, and we've got Whirlipede coming in. Whirlipede's a cool Pokemon, you don't get to see it too often. And it's got a pretty cool shine of that nice deep purple on that nice uh, nice deep green. Oh, look, that's very good. So we've got the Mimiku go for a Curse, and it's going to fail this time because... It ended up hitting the Rapidash instead of the Whirlipede, right? Because I couldn't pick a target. Bye-bye, Rayquaza, to the play rough. And we got Whirlipede going for Infestation on my Mimiku, which is quite funny because we've both got Infestation. So I'll be hitting myself in uh, Infestation, not in Confusion, and I'll also be getting hit by the Hail. Then I'll be healing myself up with the Leftovers. So these couple of turns here, it took a while because we all got spanked by Hail. Then I had leftovers, then I had infestation. So you can see how long some of these turns could actually be in the uh, double. So, oh, Rapidash also had leftovers as well. But once again, if you if you would like to see, I don't know, would you like to see a multi-battle and everything team? I could possibly do one. Sort of just depends. Like I was thinking I could do a, you know some single, a single, then a multi, then we can mix it around. It sort of depends to uh, what sort of battles I get in the multis as well. But I think it'd be quite interesting uh, to add some uh, new content to the theme team teams. All right, so we're going to bring in the Charizard here. It's, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait a second. They didn't bring in the rare orange Charizard. They had to keep with the non-shiny theme. I, I get it, I get it. Soon comes the Azumarill here. It's nice and yellow. I'm going to get a, uh, a curse up here, and this is going to be hitting the Azumarill, which is going to be very, very nice. So bye-bye to Azumarill's health every single turn, and bye-bye to my Mimiku. Now, Azumarill is going to be uh, actually quite interesting set here. I'm going to be, uh, sorry, not, I'm not going to be doing My partner's going to be hitting with the, uh, th I guess we're sort of one and the same team though, right? It's going to be a Hydro Pump. It's a special Azumarill. Hits Cherryzard really, really hard right there. Now, Whirlipede is going to set up the Iron Defense. This thing could get very bulky very fast if it is running a Everlight set, right? Now, all I've seen from Whirlipede, it seems to be fairly passive. It's got Iron Defense and Infestation. I don't know what other moves are, but it might just be a stalling Pokemon with Infestation. You might have Toxic as well, right? So, uh, we got the Azumarill getting hit by the Curse there. The Reflect is going to wear off, and it's got that strange camera angle there. Like, Whirlipede was just staring into, like, Azumarill solid. Now, we're going to bring in my... or oh, I'm going to bring in my Tang here. This is my last Pokemon, because as, as I said before, you can only pick three. And I uh, nearly got to go for a P. But we're going to go for a Dynamax right here on my Tang, And I thought, I need to probably get rid of this Whirlipede before it gets too many Iron Defenses up. Because I'm sort of looking at the rest of my team, right? We've got the Charizard and the Tang. If we don't get through that Whirlipede, I think it's going to be able to beat us. Because it's just so bulky, right? Now, we got the uh, Charizard go for Flip. It's like, okay, that's really good. It won't take it out, but it should do a good chunk of damage, which it does, right? That is definitely Everlighted with... Uh, I'd say it'd be Max Health and Everlighted, that uh, Whirlipede. It could possibly be Max Defense as well. So, Charizard is going to go down this turn. What are the way you look at it? So, I'm going to go for the uh, uh, Max... Uh, well, not, not, not the Max Rockfall, Stojourner's Cousin. 
How could I? How could I mess that up? How could I mess my own meme up? So we're going to have some sand going at the moment. Spitty uh, Charizard doesn't have safety goggles. And uh, we got the Whirlipede. Sorry, not the Whirlipede. The Azumarill going for a rest here. So getting all of its health back. So that's kind of unfortunate. But at least we put the Whirlipede on a small amount of health, right? That was the plan anyway. And uh, now Whirlipede's going to go for the Disrespect Infestation. It does one, <laughs> it does one damage to Charizard. And Charizard will go down to the Sandstorm Toxic. And it will go down to like three different things. So it didn't really matter there, right? Uh, we're going to get some Sandstorm damage on the Azuril, and we're going to get also get on the Whirlipede too. Whirlipede is going to go down the next turn to the Sandstorm, and Azuril is a sitting duck at the moment too, because it is sleeping and cursed. So I was thinking, okay, let's go for Max Steel Spike on the Azuril. I should nearly be able to take it out, and then Curse will do the job, and it'll be GG, right? Because Curse will take out Azuril, and the Sand will take out the Whirlipede, right? That was the plan anyway. So Zubro is going to be sleeping. It's going to pop a snore. And it does one damage. And it's going to be getting a, a special attack boost on the throat spray. So a snore Azumarill. Very, very nice. I very much like that. So Whirlipede is also going to have rest. I was like, oh, that sucks so much. Now it's going to get all its health base. So very, very bulky Whirlipede right there. I still think, judging on what sort of set they're running, maybe, maybe my opponent can... Uh, you know, say what the set was in the comment section. I'd say it probably had Toxic and Infestation and Iron Defense. And one other sort of, maybe a supporty move there. I don't think it had any other attacking moves, right? So the Azura is going to go down to the curse that I set up like 69 turns ago. And I think I've got one more turn of Dynamax left here, I believe, on my me tank. So I thought, let's go for the super effective Rockfall here. And that should be you know, kind of nice on the world. But it doesn't do a lot of damage though, right? So that's, that's cool. I can also go for the Zen Headbutt afterwards, and that should do some good damage to it too. And hopefully I can get some flinches there. So Wellafeet is down to uh, half its health there, and I was thinking, even if they Dynamax, right? Let's say they Dynamax. They won't be able to use Iron Defense or Rest or anything like that. Wait, Rest is their last move. No, they got Rest, Iron Defense, um, Infestation. I reckon the last move is Toxic. I guarantee their last move is Toxic. And they, I mean, they could Dynamax here, but then they won't be able to store my Me Tang out, right? It's like a, a double edged sword. So go for a couple of Zen headbutts there. That was just enough to take out that bulky Willipede. And that, my friends, is the game. I hope you enjoyed the single battle and the multi battle. I'll catch you on the stream if you uh, visit there for the Platinum Nuzlocke. Peace out.